Oh, this right here? This? That's a real gamer wound right there. This is what we call choice and consequence encapsulated in a massive bicep, okay? I made the choice to put 5G in my bicep. <laughs> Uh, welcome, everybody. Hope all of you are doing absolutely fantastic. I've got some chicken teriyaki sitting across my room, so I'm doing very well as the aroma fills this studio. Mmm, smells like an unhealthy meal. With that in mind, let's talk about Square Enix acquisition. So, Xbox rumors are swirling yet again because this company cannot resist being in the rumor mill. So, we have a lot to talk about, but like I said, the focal point of this is Square Enix potentially being acquired. Now, there's a twist and a turn to this story, and we'll get to that. But most interesting is that this report comes from Bloomberg, which has been a trusted source for a lot of companies being acquired, breaking news in gaming, all that stuff. So we can take this and run with it a little bit. With that in mind, if you're new here, you like Xbox news, you like RPGs, you like gaming reviews, discussions, all that, I'm not going to ask you to subscribe. I'm going to fucking tell you to subscribe. Do it right now. Okay, cool. All right. So now that you've subscribed, let's get into this, starting off with Bloomberg, where the article is headlined, multiple potential buyers interested in Square Enix reporting. Now, with some of this article, you may notice it sounds weird. That's because it's been put through Google Translate. So I do apologize for that in advance, but it's a short read. So let's get it started. Several potential buyers have shown interest in Square Enix. CTFN quoted two bankers familiar with the matter. It's not clear if the focus is on the gaming sector or the company as a whole. Other than that, that's the report there. Square Enix may be selling. So what's interesting is not even 12 hours later, Square Enix puffs out their chest and goes, uh-uh, nope, we're denying that. So they come out with this report right here. Bloomberg has reported today that there is interest from several buyers to acquire Square Enix. However, this report is not based on any announcement by Square Enix. We do not consider selling off the company or any part of its businesses, nor have we received any offer from any third party to acquire the company or any part of its businesses. Now, if you've watched a lot of Maddie podcast, Ham Radio, Defining Duke, I guessed it on Sacred Symbols Plus, I've been saying that of the remaining independent companies like Ubisoft or Square Enix, Warner Brothers Gaming Division, that I personally believe the next to fall will be Square Enix. They just strike me as the same way Bethesda was where they have these games that are not performing as well, like Final Fantasy 15 when it came to its post-launch support or Marvel Avengers, which completely cratered them for that year, um, where they're doing a lot of damage and they're continuously making deals everywhere, right? We're seeing Xbox deals, PlayStation deals, Nintendo deals, and that'll be a major focus of our discussion here. But if you've been listening to those podcasts, I've been sort of beating the drum that I think, hey, Square Enix is likely next because a lot of their moves are reminiscent of that of Bethesda when that happens it could be years from now but you may be wondering why am I entertaining the discussion when Square Enix themselves came out and said yeah we're not selling well they're not gonna say we are interested in selling and in fact if you have the offer on the table we'll take it like that's not what they are going to do and I believe it would influence the market in a way that could be deemed as a lot of people are saying insider trading which I think would make sense so they really can't come out and be like yeah we're selling they could only stand to deny it, which is why I think there's room for doubt, especially when Bloomberg is reporting it. They don't just shit out reports like this isn't a Kotaku, right? This is Bloomberg. So I take it a little bit more seriously because they've earned my trust as a reader and as a reporter. So with that in mind, there's been a lot of real excitement for this because people are going, get him PlayStation, Xbox, you got to nail them down. And what I've said a lot of times, and some people are going to try to call me a hypocrite here, but I've been saying it for months, is a lot of people are in the now with this. We only are familiar with the now acquisitions, which are Insomniac being bought by PlayStation, which made sense. That was many years in the making, quite honestly. You have, of course, the most famous one, Xbox acquiring all of Bethesda, which in a number of ways was years in the making, but really was serving to round out Xbox's first party to then get all of their studios in a row and completely dominate each quarter. And then, last but not least, you look at the tail end of it where you see Gearbox get a billion dollars from the Embracer group. And I'm sorry, but Gearbox is not worth more than someone like Insomniac. So it's just showing that companies are willing to sell because the prices are up, man. It's time to sell. So there's a willingness on all fronts. And all I'm going to say is with a lot of companies, if 
someone like Microsoft says, we're willing to pay, yes, Square Enix is willing to play. Same thing with something like PlayStation, where I think it makes a lot of sense. A lot of people are in the now. It's great that Xbox has Bethesda, but no one's thinking about what it's like when you start to see these independent companies fall one after another after another and then you're left with an industry with like five companies now i'm not saying it's a bad thing in one manner because i think for example with xbox i feel a little more optimistic about their acquisitions because someone like bethesda who did a great game like prey which performed horribly or dishonored 2 who performed horribly or the evil within which didn't do that well either or a sequel to wolfenstein it's a little more viable now because of that game pass library and so i feel a little bit more optimistic about that no disrespect to playstation who i think still makes really great games um where if square enix were to join them i think that would make a lot of sense but a lot of people aren't thinking about what a industry looks like if these companies are no longer independent so square enix is a perfect example of a company that over the number of generations has struck deals for some legendary franchises so i compiled the list and it's not a long one but it's enough to get your brain going on what it looks like when we see this company or we saw it happen with bethesda disappear off the market but i need to emphasize one more time i think the acquisition of bethesda made sense for xbox i think it made sense for bethesda especially who was not in the best position no matter what they say and so i think that is one of those special circumstances but afterwards like the constant gobbling up where now you, you could look at xbox and say they've got 35 plus first party studios that's insane and so is it worrisome i wouldn't say that but I would like some companies to remain independent. So Square Enix, let's take a look at their Xbox history where they did Infinite Undiscovery on an exclusive capacity. They did The Last Remnant on a temporarily exclusive capacity for 10 years. You could only get that on the 360 because the PS3 version was canceled. And it wasn't until they did a re-release on the PS4 and Switch that you could get The Last Remnant on other platforms. Then there's Star Ocean, The Last Hope, which was one year exclusivity on Xbox 360. And of course, the most recent and popular Square Enix Xbox deal is Outriders Day One Game Pass, which has worked out for them fantastically. Nintendo is also in on all of this, right? Chrono Trigger is probably one of the most famous RPGs of all time, and that came between Square Enix and Nintendo. Bravely Default was a recently released JRPG on the Nintendo Switch, and they did the first one with the DS. So there is that there. Theater Rhythm is another between the likes of Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy. That's Nintendo based. And Octopath Traveler is no snooze either, selling two plus million copies on the Switch before moving over to Xbox years later as well as PC. Then PlayStation being the obvious one, Final Fantasy is at home on PlayStation. 16 is going to be exclusive. Seven Remake is currently exclusive to PlayStation. Apparently the contract had ended recently and so we are yet to see as of this point in time of me recording the video we are yet to see PlayStation let up on 7 remake and that it's going to other platforms and then you've got Kingdom Hearts which is this wild wacky franchise that was mostly exclusive to PlayStation outside of a 3DS entry with Dream Drop Distance now it's everywhere and then Dragon Quest of course which has moved to Xbox but point being is a lot of these ideas started on individual platforms and that takes a company that's willing to buy in and willing to play. So I'm just trying to offer a objective perspective here and be fair where, yeah, as a person who runs an Xbox podcast, would it be an amazing discussion to sit here and go, Xbox has Kingdom Hearts, baby. Yeah, it'd be kind of wild to even think about. Same thing with PlayStation, where if you've been paying attention to those shows, I said PlayStation and Square Enix make a lot of sense. And I think with their Final Fantasy relationship, that is the most likely to happen. Um, but really, as a business, it's about who's offering the most cash to Square Enix and the most opportunity. And Xbox does have some of that. Let's be honest. With Game Pass, that changes, I think, how companies view negotiations. But I have to look at something like a Kingdom Hearts, where at the time, PlayStation was the only one who was down, right? This was PlayStation 2. And for a company to go up and say, hey, we're going to do um, Disney and Final Fantasy together. It's going to be an action RPG. And it's going to be really crazy. And they did it. Um, or Xbox saying, hey, let's try this kind of semi-open world action RPG exclusive to the 360 in the name of Infinite Undiscovery, where like the planets chain to the moon or something like that. Um, really, really cool 360 exclusive. Uh, and of course, Nintendo being game with something like Octopath Traveler, like, hey, let's do a classic 16-bit JRPG with a job system, just like we saw in the old days. 
Like that type of stuff is awesome still. So that's the one thing I want to offer, just like people have offered up with Bethesda with the likes of them doing deals for Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo with PlayStation. So let's move on to our next story here. Uh, this is a quote from Windows Central Gaming, but it comes from a podcast by Video Game Chronicle, uh, where someone from gamesindustry.biz, this is a long line of journalist sites, um, had a quote, Christopher Dring, and it's an interesting one because it's about some future Xbox exclusives, so let's dive into it. I've had a few conversations with friends at Xbox Game Studios, and those games they announced, Everwild, Perfect Dark, Fable, are so far away, as in they might even be in a new Xbox by the time these games come out. When you look at Hideo Kojima's stuff, you wonder if they are signing third parties in the moment because they don't have a lineup of big exclusive at all, uh, which is something that I think a lot of us have speculated, the idea that, hey, um, maybe Xbox is going to sign a lot of third party deals because they want to shore up that side while other games are still in development. Because uh, Bethesda is sort of nearing a point where, even though it's not all on Xbox, stuff like Deathloop, Ghostwire, Starfield, and I think Wolfenstein 3 are about to sync up within the next number of months, uh, where <clears throat> they can all drop in a relatively short period of time, just the way all the dev cycles lined up. So you may be waiting a while for Bethesda's projects to line up, and then you've got ones way on the horizon. Like, of course, Perfect Dark is very far away, right? That's a studio that started from the ground up with the initiative. And so, yeah, it's going to be some time before we see stuff like that. What I found most interesting here was the claim that stuff like Fable is far away. Everwild was announced at the end of 2019. So that one, I believe, uh, is far away. But Fable, I don't, I'm, I know, like, I don't have a source on this one, but I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, this has been since 2018. Uh, really late 2017 is what I had heard. And so for suddenly Fable to be a mid-gen refresh game uh, is strange. And the mid-gen refresh doesn't make sense to me personally because when you look at something like how Xbox and PlayStation are struggling to move units, right? Even though they're selling well when they're out there, they're struggling to move units and mass produce them because of a chip shortage. And you're telling me they're already working on a mid-gen refresh when we can't even have these players experience the actual next gen stuff the only thing i could see is maybe a discless xbox series x i've seen a lot of fans speculate something like that for fifty dollars hundred dollars less yeah that makes a lot of sense but that wasn't at the point of the series s the digital version of the playstation 4 which is admittedly as powerful as the 5 um whereas the s has some setbacks here or there but it's still an extremely impressive piece of hardware um yeah, like I thought that was the point of the S. So you had these different tiers and we didn't, we had the X, which was kind of like the next step. Um, I didn't think there was this idea here in the industry that we would see another mid-gen refresh. Um, the idea is that these consoles were supposed to be future-proof as far as I was aware. Um, so, and, and not even that, but also customization, the ability to like add things into them has been a rumor for some time. Um, AI upscaling. So I, I don't know if we're actually getting a new box. I believe that stuff like Everwild is a couple of years off. Um, I believe stuff like Perfect Dark is, you don't need a source for that. You don't need to talk to anybody for that. Look when it got announced. Look what was shown when it got announced. Look at the studio. Perfect Dark's a way off. Um, but Fable? I think Fable's next year. Not what I heard, but you know, just in general. So take it as you will. But still, some Xbox games a little bit further off. I don't know if I buy hook, line, and sinker to it entirely. Now, let's get into our last story here. Um, there's been some talk about Xbox and Nintendo, um, where we see Jeff Grubb talking about it on his Games Mess, Games Beat Decides podcast. And then uh, we also have an insider report saying the cat seems to be out of the bag on Nintendo and Xbox. You'll hear more in the fall. And it's brought about this conversation of Game Pass or Halo or something Xbox related coming to Switch. And I would love for this to be a two-way street, by the way. A lot of Xbox fans are like, get Halo on Switch, and I'm about that. But I'm also equally about getting Mario Kart on Xbox. That would be more industry shattering to me. We've seen Xbox give a lot. I would love to see someone else stop being the receiver and be like, hey, here's something of ours too. And I know that sounds wild, but like you want to break the industry, break the web. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on Xbox? I'm just saying, I know it sounds fucking ridiculous and it'll probably never happen, but my consideration is, and this can be contradicted by what I said about the part shortage, is with xCloud and Game Pass really heating up, we've talked about smart TV apps, 
iOS supports coming soon. Why would Xbox want to do the Switch app when the Switch Online is terrible? The Switch Wireless Adapter is awful? What I think would be really cool is if Xbox said, here for $100, get a tablet that's built for streaming, kind of like an Xbox handheld. Um, not where you can put a disc in or a cartridge in or whatever, but you can stream to this thing. Um, I was just thinking something like that would make sense because we're looking at a company that's done premium headsets, budget headsets, right? They had like the $100 wireless headset. They had the Olufsen $500 headset for Xbox. So they've done all these different accessories and pieces to different consumers. So why wouldn't you make almost a Game Pass device at the end of the day, right? You've got the apps, you've got it on your Xbox, your PC, you're looking at smart TV, streaming on phones, streaming on tablets. Why not say like, hey, this handout here is your streaming device for Game Pass. I don't know. I think that would be really cool. So I'm sure we'll hear more about Nintendo and Xbox. That's been a rumor for years. But last we heard about it with Phil, he was like, I'm game, but you know, we want to keep it in our ecosystem. So we'll see. With that, uh, the news roundup is done. So let me know what you're thinking about Square Enix acquisitions, uh, Xbox handhelds, which as a Vita freak would be incredible. And of course, the latest on some of Xbox's upcoming exclusives. Fire away. Other than that, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy. Stay active. Love you all. Peace.